I'm going to give you quite a short demonstration really just showing you basically what you can do with the fluting toolpath which is a module in Artcam Express 2015 so this is a new module available to Artcam Express okay so I'm just going to show you a few examples of what you can actually do with this and then I'm going to finish up by creating this wave board that you can see on the screen at the moment okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is go to file and I'm just going to close the model I'm not going to save the changes for that and here you can see just the basic welcome screen when you start up Artcam Express now if you take a look on the far right hand side you can see that I have an installed module which is the fluting toolpath so I have no, none of the other modules installed everything else that you see that's nothing to do with fluting is going to be done using the basic Artcam Express okay so what I'm going to do is do a new model and let's do this let's say 300 millimeters by 250 millimeters and I'm just going to select OK and that will open up a new model for me now this starts up in the 2D view what I'm going to do is just switch over onto the 3D view and just take a plan view of that okay and what I'm going to do is create a, a line first of all just select anywhere on the model and rather than holding down an angle snap button for instance and then just coming out I'm just going to enter a DX value of 125 and then select add point and this is going to basically create a 125 millimeter line okay so let's center that in the model okay so here you can see on the left hand side I have a green marker and on the right hand side I have a red marker now this indicates the start and the end point so the green is the start the red is the end you need this information for the fluting because you basically are going to specify the start of the flute and the end of the flute so you need to know which way around this actually is really so because I drew this left to right it's starting on the left finishing on the right now if I wanted this to be the opposite way apart from drawing it the other way what I can do is right click on there and select reverse vectors and that will go from right to left then okay so it will flute from right to left so let's just go back reverse that back like so and I'm just going to rotate that around let's say to there so the first thing that I'm going to do is open up the fluting toolpath and just explain to you how it actually works okay so if I go to toolpaths and then under 2D toolpaths we've got create fluting toolpath so if I select that it opens up the fluting dialog box now what fluting actually does it just basically controls the ramp moves or the way that the tool goes into and comes out of the material and you can add all different settings to the way that this actually works okay and it works on any 2d objects so for instance lines circles for instance okay so what I'm going to do is use selected vectors we have an option that says to reverse the selected vectors so you know when I just showed you how to reverse it you could just select there and you can see that we have an arrow in the center just indicating which direction this is going in okay like so now this is quite useful if you have a group of objects that you've got selected but if you want to do some quite weird things like when I do the wave board you won't be able to use this option you'll have to do it manually so you'll see that in a in a moment okay so finished depth let's do this let's say five millimeters let's use a fluting tool now best things that I've got in my tool database are ball noses and V bits to do this uh, you can use anything really that's got a bit of form on the tool it doesn't look so great with end mills so what I'm going to do is just use a 12 millimeter ball nose tool click select and I'm going to, where it says flute profile, I'm going to specify start and end profiles. Now what I'm going to do first of all before going into that 
it's just defined my material so let's set that up at about 20 millimeters and you can see that that's created a material block okay so let's just zoom back in so you can see what's happening here when I select specify start and end profiles it opens up this dialog in the middle with a start flute and an end flute okay now what I'm going to do is turn off the end flute and not have an end flute and I'm going to keep the start flute as a linear so this is basically just going to go down in the straight line and I'm going to do it to a length of let's say 10% so basically it's going to come down at an angle until it gets to the 5mm depth that I've specified and it's going to do this over 10% of the line that I have here so when it gets to 10% it's going to reach that depth and it's going to work out the angle for me okay so if I select calculate now you can see the red is the tool path so you can see it's coming down until it gets to the 5 millimeters depth which is 10% of the length of this line and then it's just coming along straight so if I were to simulate this and then you can see what's actually happening so you can see it's just fluting in slightly here and giving me this sort of shape on the end there and you can see that it's just coming to nothing on the end just basically retracting okay so let's delete that simulation and let's just turn on the vectors again okay so let's turn on the toolpath so you can see that so if I wanted to change how this flutes into there you can see that the length at the moment is 10% if I wanted to I could change this to let's say 30% and you'll see that the angle becomes more acute okay so if I select that you can see it's coming down until it gets to 30% I could change that to let's say 70% if I wanted to and you can see it's coming down to around about here okay so let's go back to let's say 10% and you can also change this to a curve so if I wanted this to curve around rather than actually just going straight down at an angle I can do that so you can see that I get this nice curve here okay now I can make that a little bit larger if I wanted to let's say 30% and you can see that I've got this curve so I can just simulate that so you can see it okay so you can see that it's just slowly going down into the depth okay so you can do some quite cool little effects with this now if you wanted to rather than specify a percentage you can change that to millimeters so if you wanted to do that a bang on set size you can do that Okay, the end flute, I can change that to, let's say, linear, or I could have a curve if I wanted to. Let's say I wanted that to be, let's say, 30% also. What will happen here is that it will come down like it is at the moment for the start flute, but then when there's 30% left of the line, it will start coming out of the material. Okay, so calculate now you can see that it's coming out of the material here so if I simulate that you can see that I'm getting much the same results on both sides you can see the start though is a curve and the end is just coming straight out so you can get this sort of effect okay let's delete that simulation what you can also do with this is to change it to a custom curve also so you can create any weird and wonderful curves that you want to within this so let's say for instance I wanted something let's say like that for instance and let's change this to let's say 10% for the start flute and you'll see that I get this sort of shape here which will be stretched out to 10% okay so if I calculate that you can see I've got this shape and it's stretched out to 10% of the actual line that I'm machining so if I simulate that you can see that I get this just this little gouge in here which is basically where it's fluting just the top of this if I wanted to I could change it so it was more like that let's say calculate now let's reset this simulation and you can see that I get this sort of effect so I have just got this little bit on the end there okay so that's basically how you use the fluting toolpath okay so I'm going to show you just a couple of examples now just 
of it basically in practice. Okay, so let's just turn on the vectors. Let's delete this simulation like so. Let's take a plan view. And what I'm going to do is just grab the end of this and just move that until it snaps to the edge of the model. Okay, and I'm going to create a block copy rotate of this, let's say, give it a gap of, let's say, 25 millimeters. I'm going to do, let's say, four rows, like so. And let's go to transform. And I'm just going to make this a little bit wider, like so. Now, the reason that I've done this is to create some grooves that you would normally see for instance in a draining board or on a worktop draining board surface okay so what I'm going to do is just select all of these vectors let's edit this fluting now you can see that it's still just selected the first vector so let's just select all the vectors importantly make sure that they're all going the same way okay and I'm going to do this, let's say, three millimeters deep for this. Let's change the start flute to uh, just a normal linear. And the end flute, I'm going to turn that off because I basically want this to step down gradually until it gets to the depth at the very, very end of the line. And I can do that by entering a length of 100%. So it's not going to get to that three millimeter depth until it gets to 100% of the line. So it's gradually going to be going down all the way along this line. And that's how you create this draining board effect. Okay, so if I select to calculate now, you can see the red toolpath slowly coming down and eventually it gets to the depth there. Okay, so what I can do with this is to right click simulate the toolpath and you can see that it's given me this effect so it's going from basically nothing there all the way down to three millimeters here and that's how you create this draining board effect okay so I'm going to show you something a little different now I'm going to create more of a, a texture I'm going to create a wave board and I'm going to show you how you do that with the fluting toolpath okay so Let's just delete the simulation. Let's take a plan view. And I'm just going to delete all of these vectors also. Okay, and I'm just going to create a vector that's overlapping the model. If I press control on the keyboard, that will give me a 15 degree angle snap. Okay, so let's just select, basically create a vector that's going over the whole of this model. And I'm going to center that. And I'm going to create quite a few copies of this. Let's do the gap, let's say 10 millimeters. And I'm going to do this, a nice even number, 31. <laughs> so let's apply that. And magically enough, if I center that, you can see that it covers the whole of my model. Okay, I've not done this before. Uh, that was just a complete guess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's go up to the top and I'm going to create basically a, a sine wave sort of shape. So I'm going to have a few peaks and troughs. So let's just do this. Turn on smooth polylines so I can do this. Like so. Uh, let's bring that down to around about there. Now, to get this looking perfect, you would probably need to get all of these the right height or the same height and the same width so you just create one of those and maybe just mirror that over so let's rotate that around now the reason that I've created this wiggly vector at the top is because I'm going to use that to control the fluting so it's basically going to create that shape as it flutes in and out of the material to the depth that I specify. So if I go to edit this fluting toolpath and I'm going to leave the finished depth of three millimeters, let's say, let's maybe have a start depth of 0 0.2 so I know that it's going to go into the material all the way along. And what I'm going to do is let's change the ball nose 
let's select maybe a V bit for this and I'm going to use a Z control vector and I'm going to select the vector at the top it shows me which way that it's going click select and that's now become selected so I don't need to select the start and end points for the fluting now because I'm using this to control the fluting okay so if I select all of these lines now importantly what you'll see here is that they're all going in the same direction okay so if I calculate this and then go to simulate you can see that it's dipping in and out of the material and what it's doing is following this contour okay now that's not really what I want I want this to be sort of opposite I want to create a whiteboard now the way that I do that is if I delete the simulation and what I can do is select this first vector and select every other vector okay so let me just select those now this is where reversing the vectors using the dialog box up here where it says reverse selected vectors wouldn't work because I would have all of the vectors selected so what I need to do is just select each one and then what I'm going to do is right click and reverse vectors so now if I select all of these vectors you can see they're going in opposite directions which means that it will basically give me a different effect when it goes in one direction to the other so if I calculate this now and then I simulate this you'll see that it will give me this waveboard effect now it would obviously look a little bit better if I spent more time doing the wiggly line at the top as you can see this is not quite close together but you can get the general gist of what I'm trying to do so if I select simulation and what I can do is change this to let's say blue wax and apply let's add a depth colour to this let's say like so and you can see that it's given me this sort of waveboard effect okay now the, the, the peaks and troughs in the middle appear to be too far apart so I just need to edit those and recalculate it in fact I'm going to try and do that now so let's take a plan view of that I think that it's this end point here like so let's bring that there okay so let's give this a go okay and then calculate again and let's simulate this this should look a little bit better okay so there you can see that's looking a lot better okay so there you can see my wave board okay and this is entirely done by using 2d objects or lines and it's also done by using the fluting toolpath okay so I'm just going to show you how you can post this to your machine or send it to your machine so if I go to toolpaths and then go to save toolpaths you can see that I've got the toolpaths to save on the right hand side here I can save toolpaths to separate files so if I had quite a few toolpaths and I only had a single headed machine I can save each one to a separate toolpath I can append the toolpath details to the file name so it would show fluting and then it's using the v-bit on the actual file name let's use this folder that I've created to save this in the machine file format now this is basically a converter so this converts all of the code from ArtCam the toolpaths into language that your CNC will understand now we've got well over 200 posts within here if you're not sure whether your CNC is actually supported if you download the trial version you can actually go through all of the tutorials and you can get to this stage and actually post this out and convert it so you can try it on your machine and I recommend that you do that before purchasing 
if you're unsure whether your machine is supported. Okay, so let's say I wanted to use, let's say, an iCarver machine, like so, and then select Save, and that will save the file into this folder. Let's go onto the desktop and into this folder, and there you can see the NC file. So if I just double click on that, it'll open up some numbers and code that basically tell the CNC where to go, what to do, and basically shows tells it how to machine that part that I've just created. Okay, so that brings an end to the demonstration. I hope that you found it useful. Many thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.